Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at for loops in Java. So first, we'll just start by understanding what exactly I mean by loops. So generally in programming, let's say I want to do an action many times. Now, this could be something very simple. Let's say I want to print, right? I want to print the word hi 100 times, literally 100 times. Do you really think it's efficient for me to print hi or type the system out the printer and statement a hundred times? It isn't. It's not efficient. Instead, what I can do is use loops, right? Now, a loop, basically, the definition is what it does is that it does an action or executes a block of code as long as a condition is true. So, as long as a certain condition is true, I mean, it can be a group of conditions as well. So as long as a condition is true, it would execute a block of code. Now, you do notice that I'm saying as long because this is different from if statements. If statements, what did we do? When a condition is true, it would execute a block of code. So if I have, if I have a condition over here and I have some, some code over here, if statement would check this condition, if it's true, it would execute this and it would move to the rest of the program. Now a loop does something quite different, right? When I'm looking at a loop, it would keep executing that block of code. So let's say I have a loop. Um, so I really hope you know what, what, what while loops mean. I made a video on that. If you don't know what while loops mean, I recommend checking that out. If you don't know what it means, that's still fine. You can still understand for loops, but let's say, uh, I have a simple while loop here. It's just common English. Okay, while loops are common English, for loops are not, but I'm going to make it simple. So let's say I have while and the condition and I have a block of code. Now this is what, what I would call a loop. So what the while loop would do is it would check this condition. It would execute this code and it would move to the next part. No, it, it wouldn't do that because remember your definition as long as the condition is true. So it would again, check the condition. And if that condition is again true, it would again execute that code. And then it would continue. It would repeatedly check in, it would, it would repeatedly check the condition and execute the code if the condition is true. So as long as the condition is true, it would execute that block of code. Okay. So while loops were pretty simple, right? While a condition is true, you would execute something. Now, for loops are quite different. And well, to be fair, while loops are actually more easy. For loops are definitely harder to understand because it isn't quite straightforward as while loops. So for loops are a little hard, but once you actually get how to use them, that's actually more important. I mean, in my opinion, they're, they're a lot more easier to use than while loops. Now, first thing you need to know is that any loop, right? Any loop, while loop or for loop, or there's another kind of loop that's known as the do while loop. I'm not going to be discussing that, but any loop really has three components, right? First thing is the iterator. So the iterator is basically a variable. And what we're trying to do is use the variable to control how long the loop proceeds. You can understand why this is important later on. Next thing you need is the condition. And this, this makes sense. The definition itself has a condition. As long as a condition is true, as long as it is met, you would execute a block of code. The next thing you would need is an update. Why you would need this? Again, you can understand that as we proceed. Now, I'm, I'm going to show you a simple example, right? Using simple English, let's say while three is greater than two, we will print Hello. So I actually recommend trying this out on your code editor. I'm not going to do that right now because this is again, very simple. So I'm checking for a condition here. And when that condition is true, I would, and as long as the condition is true, I would execute this. Now here's something that you see three is always greater than two. So according to the definition, technically this should always execute. I just realized you can't see that. I'm sorry about that. But this should always execute. There is nothing controlling when the loop starts and when it breaks. 
think about it. I want my loop to execute a certain thing 50 times. And I don't want I don't want it to execute this an infinite number of times. Right? So that's where you would use your iterator and your update to control it. To control where the loop starts and where the loop ends. Right? Now this is gonna make a lot more sense when you practice or do the programs. But for now, let's just look at the syntax of the for loop. Now the for loop is very simple, very straightforward. The thing I like about the why uh, about the for loop is all three components, the iterator, condition, and update are in the syntax. Now in a while loop, you would do the condition separately. So you would do the iterator separately, or you would create a variable separately. And you would check the condition separately and you would do the update in the loop separately in a while in a for loop it's, it's very necessary to mention all three of these things so it's definitely a lot more easier now i think that it's more it's easier to understand for loops if you can understand how exactly you would use iterators uh updates and conditions so let's just look at that for a second okay so i, I open my core editor i recommend open or i recommend opening whatever ID or code editor you use. So let's just create a simple loop. Let's say int a equals three. Again, I really recommend learning about while loops first. It's definitely important. And let's say int b equals two. So let's just say while a is greater than b, I would print something. I would print high in this case. Now, what do you think will happen? I already explained this, 3 is always going to be greater than 2, so you're always going to be printing high. Look at this, the program never ends. Even though it looks like it's ending, you can see it's actually printing high. That's a, that's a blinking that you see at the end. So I'm going to end this program manually because it's not going to end unless I end it. Now, this is an infinite loop. This is what we call an infinite loop. So it goes on again and again. Now here, what's lacking is an iterator and an update an update is basically change in the iterator I'll, I'll show you another example let's say i say int i equals zero and i mean this is valid and let's say i say while i is less than five i would print sorry about that but let's say while i is less than 5 i will print i and then after i print i i would just you know randomly do i equals i plus 1 now what's gonna happen well i is 0 0 is less than 5 you're gonna print high once and then i will become 1 and then 1 is less than 5 you will print it again i will become 2 then 3 then 4 and then 5 and then you will not print it anymore so now I, I want to print high five times, I can print high five times because I'm creating a variable called i, which is what we call the iterator. I'm checking a condition, the second component, and I'm changing the iterator so that at a certain point, the condition becomes false. This, this is how you write your loop. These are the three components. Now when I execute this, I'm getting high exactly five times. I want it 50 times, I can just put 50 here. i is less than 50. So you can see it's going to end at 49. So 0 to 49, 50 times. I get 50 times. I'm not going to count all of that, but you, you, you get the point. So this is the iterator, right? This is the condition. And this is the update. So you need the iterator so you can start at a certain point. Now think about it. I can make this phi as well. So now it doesn't execute 50 times. It executes... 50, uh, 45 times i think so i can start at a point i can update so i, I let's say i say i equals i plus 2 so i only get odd numbers now now i get uh wait, i'm not printing i so now let's say uh, i print i itself right now i'm starting at 5 5 plus 2 7 9 i can control how it's changing I can control where it's starting and basically since you have a condition you have, you have an update i can also control where it's ending and this these are the three components for any loop now if you did while loops you will understand this really well i just 
explain this so you can understand for loops better the thing with for loops is in the syntax you will have the iterator you will have the update and you will have the condition all in the syntax right in a while loop, you will have while and you have the condition in the brackets in a, while, in a for loop you will have all three things so the syntax is this it's, it's very simple so you know the name it's a for loop so you'll have for now why did you use for i don't know but you can just use for here and then you will have these brackets like a while loop and you would have parentheses now the parentheses is where you would put the code that you want to execute or repeat again and again and in the brackets this is where you would add the three things so first thing is going to be the iterator right where are you starting or what value are you changing second thing is going to be a condition right this is a condition as long as this condition is true you're going to be executing a block of code and a third thing is going a third thing is going to be the update changing the iterator so you start at a point you're going to check for a condition and you have an update so in this case let's just do uh actually you know what, let's actually just understand the theory of how the syntax works so this is an example program showing the for loop right so this is the iterator i i made it i this is the condition this is the update now in a while loop you would write it as while condition this uh this statement over here same statement i'll write it over here. i'm not going to rewrite it you'll have the update and before the holding you'll have the iterator now an important thing that you see is that you're just rearranging them just arranging them properly in a for loop so what's important to understand in a for loop is how does this go and right? what is the order in which you execute these things because the program is not going to execute the whole thing at the same time it's going to execute it step by step right so the order is is this right first thing it's going to do is set the iterator that's what you do in any loop you need to have the i value next it's going to check the condition so this is where you start and then you're going to check the condition because the condition has to be true for you to even enter the loop now if the condition is true that's when you would enter the loop and you would execute whatever's in here so this it doesn't have to be uh print and high it can be anything you would execute whatever's in here and then after you execute this this is the third part you would go to the update and this is the fourth step after you go to the update you will go to the condition you will not go to the iterator because remember you only need to declare the iterator once and i know this sounds overwhelming i know this whole thing is overwhelming but remember it's just a rearrangement just a rearrangement of things if I have a while loop with a while condition uh, and code with an update with an iterator, what 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 would you do? I would go for my iterator, the iterator. I would go to the condition, to the condition. I would go to the block of code if the condition is true. That's what I'm doing here. And the if the of the of the experience block of code, I would update. That's also what I'm doing here. And after updating. Would I go back to the iterator? No, you can't go back to the iterator. The iterator is outside the loop. You would go back to the condition. And that's also what you're doing here. So just remember this. It's the same order, right? You're going from an iterator to a condition. From the condition, if the condition is true, you would go to the update. Sorry, sorry. Um, I apologize for that. If the condition is true, you would go for the code, the block of code, not for the update. I'm really sorry about that. If after, ex after executing the block of code, you would go for the update. And after the update, you would again check the condition. And after the condition, you would go for the code. And this continues as long as this update is true. When the update becomes false, you would break the loop. And you would just execute whatever's after the loop. Remember, it's just a while loop. You're just rearranging those things. So I know this thing looks overwhelming, but... In your program, you would execute for step by step. So iterator, condition, code, update, condition, code, update. You're doing the same thing here. It's just rearranged, so it seems overwhelming, but once you understand it, it's quite easy. So let's actually just look at a sample program. So in this program, uh, it's it's telling me write a Java program to accept and find a sum of twenty numbers. So what I'm going to do is just quite simple. I'm going to create a counter variable, just a, a variable equal to zero. 
So when I add, when I add, I can just say count equals count plus whatever value. So if I have zero, next value is three will become three. Next value is five will become eight. So I'm, I'm adding the values, right? Accepting and finding the sum of those values. So again, accepting the values, would I really, do I really wanna uh, have a print and statement every single time? No, I can use a loop. So for this, I'm gonna use a for loop because that's what the video is about. We're gonna first have what? The iterator. So I'm gonna say int i equals zero. And then you have the condition. In this case, I wanna do it 20 times. So I'm just gonna say i is less than 20. With experience, this is gonna become much easier. And the update, well, I wanna execute it 20 times. So I'm just gonna say i plus plus. Because 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, till 19 is gonna be 20 times. The first thing I'm gonna do is ask the user to enter the value. Right? So I'll just say, um, enter a value. And after I tell the user to do that, I'm gonna take the value as input. So I'll say int, I'm gonna create a temporary variable over here, int. So this variable equals the value that the user enters. So what am I doing? Don't, don't get confused, right? What I'm doing is pretty simple. I'm telling the user to enter a value. When the user enters a value, I'm storing it in a temporary variable. And then I'm adding it to the counter variable. Next time, I'm telling the user to enter value again. Now temp will change to the next value, but count is being added. That's what I want to do. And then I'm going to do count s yes, count plus temp. Now I won't have to bother writing i plus plus again because I mean I can write it. Yeah, I, I can write i plus plus again. This would basically do i plus plus i plus plus. So it would be i plus equals two, or it would increase i by two. I can do this again, but it's a lot more easy with for loops. Now you can clearly see the difference, right? So very simple. You're starting here, then you would check a condition if it's true. You would execute this here i'm taking the input and i'm adding it to this counter variable and i would update it i would change the condition do this so i'm going to keep doing this again and again now i'm not going to execute this because uh the video is long as it is so yeah that's mainly it about for loops now i really hope you enjoyed this video i explained everything detailed everything you should you should be good at using and understanding for loops um you're not going to be a master at it unless you practice. So try to practice a lot of problems involving for loops so that you can really get that intuitive understanding of how you can use for loops. Practice makes perfect. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like. It helps me a lot and it also helps the video in terms of the algorithm. Uh, thank you and have a great day.